And of course, we're going to start with the weakest spirit who just so happens to be more of a singer than an actual fighter, and that is without a doubt Miku. Miku happens to have a really amazing power going for her. With her angel Gabriel, she would fight in a way no other spirit can, and that is with sound. In fact, Miku's music would be so good, so mesmerizing, that she would mind control anybody that listened to it. She would have the potential to mind control a thousand people in an entire audience, easily creating a fan base for herself so that her music would become the ultimate leverage that she can use because not only would this create her a fan base, but also an army that she can control and have fight at her whim. On top of controlling an audience of a thousand people, she would not only be able to control regular humans, but also spirits with the Yamai sisters falling under her complete control, all because they heard her music. And on top of this, she can amplify the sound in case no one would hear it by using speakers. This would cause the sound to travel and increase the range of her voice so that no matter how far away you are, you would fall right under her spell. If you fall victim to Miku's control, she would be able to control you with the movement of a finger. By playing her keyboard, she would be able to control everyone as if they are puppets on a string. All of the other spirits are stronger than Miku, and it's pretty obvious. And her fighting style would be way more efficient in a support role. So that's why you'd see her a majority of the time actually using her music as a way to amplify and uplift anyone who's fighting with her. Now's as good a time as any to understand why she takes a supportive role when it comes to combat. For starters, whenever Miku would use March, by changing the tone of the song that she is performing, anyone that she is mind controlling or not mind controlling, after Miku uses March, the people around her would have their bodies become stronger than usual and their powers would also be amplified making them do a lot more damage than they would have before. Which seems pretty ideal for a supporting role. It's kind of ironic because whenever she sings, she would be the center of attention, but when fighting, it's the opposite. Miku's next performance would be known as Requiem, and whenever she used this, it would be a song that would have no healing effects, but what it would do is take away the stress from anyone that hears it. So they would be able to push through any kind of pain. For instance, Shido would feel like his muscles are getting ripped off, his bones are cracking, and in an attempt to make this less painful, Requiem would be played. This song would quite literally be no different than a painkiller and would be described as a pain reliever song. But outside of making things hurt less, it's not really going to save your life. Her next move is quite literally a showstopper with it being Rondo. With Rondo, it would paralyze anyone that would listen to this sound. The moment Rondo hits your ears, you won't be able to move a single muscle. Now, for how long that is ultimately depends on how much Miku can really hold it up. And in order to make sure that anyone that she's going against will actually hear this Rondo playing, she will summon pipes that will surround a person and then have them start producing the same music. And if anyone were trying to dodge this attack by trying to travel into the air, she will be able to adjust these same pipes and position them to aim upward so that the sound itself can actually hit a person. While being airborne, the minute you hear Rondo, you'd be sent down to the ground. Even with a low power output, its range would be so wide, it would be extremely difficult to dodge even if you somehow managed to get out of its way. Rondo is the perfect way for Miku to stop someone. Just by listening to it, you can't fight. It's pretty powerful. And when using Gabriel solo, Miku could control people to a point that she can cause them to throw away their own weapons, yet, when she doesn't want to control a person, Solo can be used in a completely different way that you wouldn't even be able to imagine. When using Solo, she would pull a pipe out of the ground. Rather than using it to manipulate people, she'd physically attack someone with the metal pipe and have enough power to destroy Yoshino's ice wall. And it would only get stronger because it would also create shock waves that can cause her damage to go way beyond just hurting someone's physical body. On top of this, she would use this pipe and swing it so fast that the human eyes can't even see it. It's so fast that you can't even see. And she would combine another move 
known as Symphony. When doing this, every time that she would smash an ice wall, the burst of impact followed by all the sounds emanating from the pipe at one single time gives Miku the opportunity to fight at a close range outside of just singing and supporting the entire time. Now are her abilities really up to snuff? That's the biggest question of it all. Honestly, no, because there's easy ways to counter Miku's fighting style. She only fights with a supportive role. Yes, she can actually take on other spirits with her pipe as a melee weapon. She's actually going to have a hard time going against a lot of other spirits. You see, if you just wear earplugs, her opponent is not going to even flinch at the sounds that she makes. Not only this, if you're fast enough to attack her before she even sings, she's already lost. Not only this, there are way more reasons as to why she can lose because her voice can get strained from singing way too much. And not only that, her melee attacks aren't going to compare to most of the other spirits and their destructive force, making her the weakest spirit by a long shot. Sound in of itself is really dangerous, but dealing with her is really easy. You can consider Nia's power to be godlike. So of course you would think it's pretty crazy for her to be this low on the list because after all, this angel's power is omniscient and knows every single thing that is going to happen. She practically see into the future and mold the future into what she wants it to be. And this is all because of her angel, Razio. By using this, she can look into the past, present, and future of anything just as long as she desires it. With the kind of knowledge that she has all thanks to her ability, she can know a weakness to any spirit and know exactly what they're going to do and plan a way to defeat them. This power allows her to know everything, but she has to have the desire to want to know a specific thing. Keep in mind, all of the information is not going to be fed to her, so she's not going to know everything only what she wants to know. So she has to do a great deal of focusing and thinking for this ability to really work to its fullest potential. Nia herself would compare it to a super powerful search engine. What makes Raziel even more daunting is that anything that you write on Raziel will become a truth. In Nia's case, she would draw something, and if she draws it, it will definitely happen. Like I said, she practically has fate in the palm of her hands. It's not hard to think that she can control life itself. This would be Raziel's strongest ability. As if knowing anything that you want to know isn't already disgusting. With an insane ability like this, I know you're wondering, how is she this low? How is it possible? Well, this is all thanks to her angel not being suitable for combat. And these are through her own words. It takes time for things to actually end up the way she wants them to. Once she sets a future description in motion, she's going to have to wait for the future that she wants to actually happen. Not only this, it isn't effective against people with strong Rayoku. It would be extremely hard for her to take anyone down, especially if they're faster than her. Anyone who can be fast enough to kill Nia before she writes anything down or even after because it's going to take time to make things happen, she's going to lose a fight easily. Now, compared to her and Miku, she can beat Miku by plugging her ears and by writing the future description because she'd be fast enough to run away from Miku of all people. And when having enough distance away from Miku and being fast enough to get away from her, she's just going to use future description against Miku and beat her by using that. This is why she would be higher than Miku. All of these other spirits would kill Nia in seconds. To describe Natsumi, we'd have to keep the description short and sweet. She'd be a jack of all trades. Believe it or not, her power would be able to transform anything into whatever she wants. Her only limitation would be her imagination. And as long as she's within a one kilometer radius, she'll actually be able to use her ability on any target that she wants. For instance, she would have missiles flying right at her and she would render them all useless. Yes, combated missiles with lock on and auto tracking. And with a simple glow of light, she'll turn all of these missiles into chocolate and candy. Maybe even stuffed animals, it all depends on whatever she feels like doing. 
she would also of course be able to transform herself into whatever she wants she would transform herself into Shido and everyone would be none the wiser thinking that she is him and this would all be thanks to the fact that she's an amazing actor, completely pinpointing someone's personality with utter ease. She would be a genius at observing and imitating others to a point where not even the closest friends of a person would be able to tell the difference. Not only this, she wouldn't be able to just turn into a different person, but she would disguise herself as a streetlight so that she wouldn't lose her life in a battle. No one would even recognize her as the damaged streetlight and she would get away unscathed. When it comes to deceit and trickery, she's completely unmatched. She would also be able to absorb anyone inside of her broom, completely capturing them, leaving them inside of a pocket dimension. And this is all possible with a simple flash of light, letting her scoop groups of people away and put them inside of her broom. Now, as amazing and powerful as Haniel sounds, it really does seem unstoppable, but really, it depends on what's going on in Natsumi's head to use this ability to its fullest extent. For instance, she would turn AST members into mascots, making them plummet to the ground because their gear would be nothing more than a costume. If she really wants to get down and dirty, she could turn AST members into children. Now, as a child, you would think, how exactly are they gonna fight back? Well, surprisingly enough, Ellen, as a child, would be able to fight back and do some damage to Natsumi. It wouldn't be vital damage because, of course, she would be weaker with the body of a child. But even so, having the potential to still hurt Natsumi speaks volumes because one thing that really holds her ability back is the fact that if she loses concentration or is knocked unconscious, her ability would no longer be active. And even being transformed into the weak state and body of a child, if you manage to make her unconscious or blow her concentration, you still have chances of fighting her back. Make Natsumi uncomfortable enough and regardless of the range of her ability, it would no longer be able to work. There are still more possibilities of Natsumi being able to defeat someone and this is all thanks to her transformation ability. She would transform her own broom into other angels and have the potential to copy every spirit's angel using their abilities. However, there's a catch from doing this. She would not be able to use the abilities and the extent of these weapons to its 100% potential. Truth be told, she would have a downgrade of any spirit's power. Copying a spirit's power would work, but using that same power against them most likely wouldn't be in her favor unless she uses a huge amount of strategizing. Realizing this, although she has an amazing ability, she would acknowledge that if she were to get into a direct confrontation with a spirit, she would have no chance of victory. If anyone can attack her from out of her range, have enough speed to blitz her, cause her to go unconscious, or let alone make her uncomfortable enough to make it so that she cannot concentrate on using her ability, she will undoubtedly lose, earning her this spot on the list. Natsumi's ability is honestly insane, but in a straight up fight, she's not making it out the gate. Yoshino is a defensive powerhouse without a doubt, and her ice abilities really make for some of the most lethal ice usage I've seen in the series yet, which is to be expected from the only ice user after all. Yoshino's most standout ability would be the way that she would use ice for defensive purposes. She would be able to create ice and make shields that would be layered by multiple thick blankets of ice, which will protect her from any oncoming attacks. Unfortunately though, these ice walls would not be able to stop the likes of Metatron, which is an angel that would boast some of the highest attack potency amongst all the spirits. In this battle, her ice walls would be destroyed in an instant, yet while facing off against Metatron, she would create ice layers faster than Metatron's actual power and ray of light. The speed in which she can make an ice wall is insane. Now, the time she needs to make this wall all the more sturdy and durable is a different question. Even so, Yoshino would be capable of so much more. While specializing in defense, this wouldn't mean that she has no firepower at all. That's a funny choice of words here, 
but one of her best assets in fighting would be the giant rabbit kaiju that she can use to freeze over a city. She would attack from a distance by using ice blasts and also shoot ice shards to not only freeze but impale her enemies. This same giant rabbit kaiju would be piloted by Yoshino whenever she feels like it, having her not only ride on his back for mobility, but put her arms inside of it so that she can control it like a puppet. Yoshino only gets more dangerous through her presence alone, she would create a storm. The weather itself would freeze anything that it came into contact with. This gives her the ability to not only manipulate and create blizzards at a whim, but she would also control the water particles in the air, which gives her instant creation, making whatever she wants to do with ice possible. She can create ice in the blink of an eye, so much so her control of it would allow her to instantly condense and freeze the air particles to allow the trajectory of a beam of light causing it to divert meaning that her ice control would be so amazing that she would react to a beam of light and cause it to go off course and not hit its target by using the water particles in the air and freezing them to change its course she's reacting to light beams with ice manipulation and causing them to never hit their targets that's the best way to break it down not only this but she could destroy any sense of mobility from one of her opponents by freezing the ground making them slip and not have an opportunity to fight her on the ground if you can't fly I don't know what you're doing against her but even if you can it makes a little difference because you might get frozen to death by not only the ice attacks but also the storm that she creates now how cold is her ice just the smoke emanating from her giant rabbit kaiju would be compared to sub-zero temperatures and liquid nitrogen that being said dealing with her ice seems nearly impossible if you some way somehow end up destroying her rabbit she can improvise and turn Zagkiel's body into a suit of armor that she can use on herself Rather than having her kaiju rabbit go on a rampage, she can absorb it and turn it into her own armor, giving herself another layer of strength and control. When using her armor Sirion, she would not only be way more durable because after all she is wearing armor, but her attack potency would be that much better. Through her arms, she would have tornadoes of cold air surrounding them. She would fire blizzard tornadoes instantly that would drill through a target. I don't know how anyone is surviving this but Sirion gives her a whole new layer of fighting if she wants to she can also instantly change between both forms of having Zagkiel be a giant rabbit or turning it into a form of armor if Zagkiel was being attacked at any moment she can quickly turn that same rabbit into armor and have it dodge an attack and then take the armor back off in the blink of an eye it's whatever she wants to do, and if she combines both of these forms, she'll literally be unstoppable. It's really hard to imagine her even losing, because she can literally do anything with her ice power. The biggest contributor to Yoshino being this low is how some of these other spirits completely overwhelm her through their sheer willpower and destructive capability alone. After taking just a quick glance at Toka, it would be easy to see how she's a powerhouse amongst all of the spirits. Even though when it comes to fighting style, she'd be as simple as it really gets. Using her Angel Sandalphon, she would summon a throne and then equip a weapon and armor from it. What's really unique about Sandalphon is not only the fact that it can hold weapons, but it can also be used as a shield, so in case a projectile or any oncoming attack, is attacking Toka or Shido, she would summon Sandalphon and then hide herself behind it like it's a piece of cover. Now, of course, if she isn't fighting defensively, we would have to talk about her offensive capabilities. Her weapon would have an insane attack potency that allows her to cut through anything. Not only this, but the sheer shock waves from her swinging her sword would cause Shido to float in the air and fly away. This should give you an idea how much power each sword swing has. And we haven't even started talking about her sword when it's in its strongest state. Toka would transform her sword using Halvin Halev. 
When using this, all of the pieces of the throne itself that Toka would summon would all come together and form to shift on top of her sword that she already has, ultimately armoring her weapon and making it stronger than what it once was. Toka's weapon would be completely overhauled with the extending in reach, size, and overall capabilities across the entire board. It would be a completely different weapon. On top of this, it would be stated that an existence that could stop Toka when using this weapon would not exist in this world. She would split an entire construction area in half, making nothing more than abyss be left in her wake. Halvin Halev would even be considered the strongest attack that Shido would even know amongst all the spirits. Quite clearly, Toka has immense strength. If anyone fought Toka, they would easily get torn to shreds. Even with so much power, she would have one last defensive option with it being Ratelovich. Much like Yoshino, she would have defensive armor for herself, but this time, it would be in the form of her throne. Naturally, all the things I listed would give Toka a really good chance of fighting back most spirits. However, her simple fighting style holds her back in the worst matchups against the stronger spirits on this list. Of course, you could even consider how when using Rotelibus, she had enough power to cut through Mio's shoulder. Of course, in this state, she would have been using Mio's power alongside the power of all the other spirits. With that being said, I'm not going to count this because I'm going to rank the spirits on their own strengths and weaknesses. Toka would have this placement because her fighting style yet powerful it may be it is very simple and can be easily strategized against and keeping your distance away from her is actually really easy if you do some way somehow close the distance between you and her she can fire energy slashes and create shock waves to try and kill you not only this but she can concentrate her energy through her weapon to increase her attack potency and much much more however the other spirits on this list can deal with her at way more effective ranges and also they would have stronger attacks than her as crazy going up against a sword that can cut through anything. Origami would have the most technical angel to use on the list. The amount of strategizing that is required to use Metatron is second to none. Somehow Origami makes all of this work giving her one of the most dangerous angels that you could come across with her taking full advantage of fighting at a distance. She would utilize every single angle of perception just to get one precise clean hit on her targets. Origami's movement speed and control is the best compared to all the spirits and it's not crazy to say that. Origami's movement and control would allow her to change directions in an instant allowing her to even fly backwards in the blink of an eye and all while moving at this same speed and momentum she can still attack anyone she's up against. This gives Origami different opportunities that other spirits wouldn't even dream of. Not only would she be able to attack at impossible angles, but she can dodge at these same impossible angles at the same time. You could easily describe her as the perfect long distance fighter. Even with a distance between her and her opponent, if you some way, somehow get close enough, to finally land an attack on her, she can phase through an attack. By turning her body into particles of light, she would disappear into thin air without anyone realizing where she is, practically like a teleportation. Her body would turn into light for an instant, and hitting her isn't the only thing that you're gonna have to worry about. Origami's intelligence when using her abilities is one of the biggest difference makers, where she can completely dissect and break apart another spirit. She can pick up on evasive habits when her target is dodging one of her lasers. Understandably so, fighting Origami makes you a fish in a barrel, and there's more. Her attack potency makes her even more terrifying. In terms of raw firepower, Kamael and Metatron would be the strongest amongst the angels. Origami's powers would be the strongest, with her raw attack potency only being tied with another spirit. An onslaught from Origami would be the last thing anyone would want. Her attacks would cause Yoshino to tremble in fear. Yoshino's defensive properties would stop her from being damaged by a tank. Yet, in the face of Origami, Toka's defense, which is sturdier than Yoshino's, would be pierced through, making durability from Toka, Yoshino, and practically any other spirit 
pointless. Most defenses, if not all, would be destroyed by Metatron and Origami. And we haven't even gotten into Origami going all out. Listing them off, she would use Artilith. This is a move where she concentrates all of her energy through every cannon that she's using at a time. This would generate a bunch of light. And in doing so, she would create an enormous attack that would concentrate a bunch of light, then shoot it all at once, incinerating. Honestly, it's more accurate to say that it's probably erasing anything it touches. Using Shemesh, her firepower would be stressed even more. Shemesh would form a ring around origami and the significance of this attack is that would be much like acid rain she would emit light particles by spinning this ring around now of course with light particles raining from the sky this doesn't really sound too dangerous but that's where we're wrong just from coming into contact with these particles you would be damaged this would be strong enough to destroy the road vehicles houses just about anything a city wouldn't even be able to withstand the rain from this light. The destruction of an entire city would be described as paper being touched by rain. So you can imagine just how fragile a city would be due to her powers. Origami can destroy a city like it's nothing. Malak can definitely be seen as another evasive option with this move, letting Origami move at a faster speed than she ever did before by flapping Malak's wings. She would move omnidirectional and reach her intended destination faster than she ever could. Finally, when using Kador, Origami's cannons would seem as if they have a will of their own and they would fire from every single possible direction. Anyone unlucky enough to run into this attack would be captured in a cage made by laser grids. Every single laser would have the power to cut through bones and flesh if they're touched. Origami can even control every last feather that she uses in the sky and command them when and where to fire. Not only this, she'd be able to control a hundred at once. So when using Kador, you can expect a hundred different lasers coming from a hundred different angles shooting at you. This would practically be impossible to do anything against. Origami's distance, speed, technicality, and most importantly, her firepower would have earned her this spot on the list, allowing her to decimate Yoshino without any room for debate. If you want to think about the technical aspects of a fight, she just outclasses the rest of the spirits that she's above on the list. Since you made it this far in the video, make sure to leave us a like and also subscribe to the channel if you're interested. And if you want to support us some more, make sure to check out our Patreon in the description and the pinned comment below. It helps us to continue creating content, and I look forward to making more content in your support. Kotori would use the most aggressive spirit I think there is. This spirit would be an incarnate of rage itself, which makes Kotori akin to that of a berserker. So her fighting style may not be the most technical, but she would make up for this with brute force and a lot of other factors. Like I mentioned before, Kamayo alongside Metatron would be considered the strongest among the angels in terms of firepower. Kamael would give Kotori access to a giant battle axe, and with every single swing of this axe, it would turn anything and everything into ashes. The axe itself doesn't even need to come into direct contact with anything that she's swinging at, because the flames that would come from the axe itself would be powerful enough to have the fire that comes from each and every swing travel away from the axe and onto an enemy only to burn them and rend apart their bodies. The fire would travel a distance and still burn people without Kotori having to hit them. And it doesn't stop there. If she still wants to hit you, if you just get out of her range, she can still extend the reach of this battle axe. So if you're not getting hit, you're going to get burned. And if you do get hit, you're going to be split in half by a flaming battle axe. Without even thinking, Kamael puts you in a lose-lose situation just by fighting off against it. All Kotori needs to do is get one clean hit or win in one offensive exchange or wear down your defense and you can either die from being burned or from the axe. And just to make matters even worse, she has a lot more that she's capable of. Kemayo would be most known for its destructive power and its regenerative ability. Whenever Kotori gets damaged, the flames of Kamael would heal her body. This allows her, unlike most spirits, to take advantage of pain tolerance. An attack would literally kill her, but it wouldn't matter because she would revive right from the dead, just as long as she still has enough Reiryoku. A way to defeat her is by waiting for all of her energy to drain. Of course, that's easier said than done. 
having Kotori fight Origami, for example. Origami seems like the perfect spirit to defeat Kotori. She can easily keep her at a distance with all of her abilities, and she would have firepower that would match Kotori. Yet, Kotori can get in close and survive any fatal injuries, and this gives her a strong edge over Origami, which is why she would be placed above her. For an even better understanding, of course, she can also increase this reach. All the other spirits do not have this regenerative ability. Now, if Kotori can get one clean hit in on any opponent, she can kill them and burn them into ashes like it's nothing. Reach means nothing to Kotori because, like I mentioned before, she can extend the reach, and the flames themselves would also try to attack her enemies. It'd only get worse because she can use Megiddo, which is a ranged weapon that has even more firepower. Of course, with this attack, she would have to charge it, but even then, I don't even think it takes that long, so this is definitely a viable option. Anyone can dodge it, but it covers a wide surface area. Even so, the way Kotori may use this strategically can definitely lead to an opening for her killing someone with her long-ranged axe and arm cannon. Having such a complete fighting style, being able to fight at close and long range gives her the edge over these other spirits. Not only this, her firepower being the highest amongst the spirits alongside Metatron would only be more convincing. Unlike Metatron, which specializes in long range, Kamayo can fight at long distance and short distances and fighting recklessly wouldn't matter because she can just kill something in one hit by turning it into ashes, all the while she's able to regenerate. Kotori has a very clear way of winning, and I don't think it's that hard to see. She definitely earned this spot on the list. Kurumi is a spirit that uses time for her powers. She can control time and do so much more, yet it works in such a creative and unique way. Some may actually be surprised about her placement, but you really shouldn't be, because there's a lot more to her than just what we've seen. Of course, when using her time control, she'd be able to access time by firing off one of her many bullets. With her first bullet, she would shoot herself, which would accelerate her own time, making it so that she can move faster than the blink of an eye. Kurumi, when using this bullet, would disappear like fog and instantly find herself around other spirits or anyone hunting her down. She would move so fast that it would be impossible for the human eye to even process her. Her speed makes it so that you can't even see her. And of course, if she can speed up time, then you guessed it, she can also slow it down. That would be the use of her second bullet. Anyone that comes into contact with this would move way slower than they were originally. They would be slowed to a point where they feel like that they would have actually ended up stopping in initial action. And with this second bullet, you're right where Kurumi wants you. Her third bullet would give her the ability to speed up time, but this would happen internally. This would cause someone to age faster if they got hit by it. Now, with her fourth bullet, this would rewind time. So if she took any kind of damage, she would shoot herself and then rewind the time she got hurt. And so she would no longer have any damage. Unfortunately, for anyone that dies, even if she were to die, that bullet would not bring her back to life. Kurumi's rewind time ability is definitely best used as a substitute for regenerating. We're still pretty early on with these bullets, but as you can tell, she has a lot to work with. Using her fifth bullet, she can look into the future. And if she overuses this ability to look into the future, she would damage her mind. Some of these bullets might not even be used towards combat, but I guess I might as well go over them in case some of you are interested. With her sixth bullet, she can send the consciousness of anyone that is shot with this bullet to the body of a past version of their self. Meaning that if she was to travel in time, if she were to shoot herself, that past version of herself would still retain the same memory from the very future that she was currently living in. And of course, for anyone else that is shot by this. With her seventh bullet, this would temporarily freeze the time of anyone, completely pausing them, unlike slowing them down. This bullet will give Kurumi a free win. If she shoots someone with this, all she needs to do is walk up to someone and shoot them right in the head and they're going to be dead. When using the eighth bullet, Kurumi can create clones of anyone that is shot at. Of course, she's going to make clones of herself, so she would have her own army that would use the same abilities and weapons as her. Her ninth bullet allows her to share her thoughts with someone, even if they're on a completely different time axis, while her tenth bullet allows her to know the past of anything that is shot with it. Let's say if Kurumi has forgotten everything, 
because she's lived for a hundred years and so much time has passed that she ends up forgetting she will remember everything that has happened if she shoots herself in the head with the tenth bullet now if she were to shoot an object let's say she would hold a photograph and a cd and put it next to her head once shooting the bullet it would pass through the cd the photograph and her own skull by doing this kurumi would be able to know that miku used to be a human before becoming a spirit kurumi's 11th bullet would be her secret weapon this would allow anyone who was shot to be sent into the future and her final bullet would allow a person that was shot to be sent into the past and so as you can tell kurumi's time control gives her quite a few win conditions and there would be even more that lets her just automatically win if you really want to get down to it if she just doesn't feel like aiming for a day she can use her city of devouring time now this is a giant field of space that if anyone steps into she can devour all of their time and to be more accurate this would be their life force by standing within a certain radius of kurumi she can eat away at your entire life and all she has to do is stand there while your life slowly gets drained away. Rather than just eating up all of your life force in your time, she can devour all of your Reiryoku. So any spirits that she's up against, rather than eating away at their time, she can just take away all of their energy and they wouldn't even be able to fight. And she can turn this into an exhibition match, or in other words, a battle of attrition. And she would suck away the energy at an extreme speed. Honestly, I can't stress it enough, Kurumi has way too much to work with here. She can create an army of clones and increase all of their speed and slow your speed down, so she's already going to be completely set to win for just that. Not only this, by shooting you with a specific bullet, if she can't kill you, let's say, because Kotori can regenerate, rather than actually killing her, what she can do is just send her into the past or the future, and she'll win a fight just like that. Or if she doesn't want to do that, she can just completely drain all of Kotori's Reiryoku or any other spirit's Reiryoku and kill them like that. And if you counter this by staying out of her range, she can just make all of her clones devour all of the time in an area so you'll be stuck in her range no matter where you are. And she's this unstoppable just by combining all of her abilities. And she can regenerate herself and take away all the damage. We've seen Kotori beat her before, but you know, this was Kurumi not using all of her abilities to their fullest extent. Kurumi is easily one of the strongest spirits, regardless of not having the strongest firepower. Her abilities alone are just that overpowered and broken. On top of that, there's way more ways that she can strategize with these abilities. I don't know how I can dig into this anymore. Kurumi has way too many ways to win, regardless of what a spirit can do to her. One good shot with any bullet, or a time stop bullet, or a send into the future bullet, she wins a fight. And this is on top of not just eating away at your lifespan, or eating away at your energy just by standing there. She was more than worthy of being this high. Yamai, now she wouldn't have Kurumi's expertise or many ways to win, but what she does have is extreme speed and power. So much so that it more than makes up for Yamai fighting with such simplicity. Now we're going to keep it nice and short here because we already know both of the Yamai sisters are twins. And the real star of the show here is their fusion. All you really need to know is that one twin uses a lance and another twin would use a pendulum. With their absurd control over the wind, they would make tornadoes and destroy the scenery without a second thought. And this is all while they're divided without being in their full power. They would be capable of even more while split apart. Yuzuru would take on Metatron's rays of light, Kamael's gunfire, and an attack from Michael. Thanks to her defense and godly reflexes, none of these attacks would affect her. And this is just one of the twins fighting alone. Together they would make two hurricanes that would ravage through everything, trap their enemies, and enhance their speed. Yet together they would be at their most dangerous. When fusing, their most destructive weapon would be their speed itself. Easily they would destroy the sound barrier. Having to fight against this immense speed, I don't think a single spirit can do anything about this. At least all the other spirits below Yamai on the list. They wouldn't even be able to react to what she can dish out. In a mere split second, the entire fight would be over before anyone even knew it. During fusion, when using the spear, it would have wind spiraling at its sharpest 
point, letting her impale an enemy into nothingness. Just the sheer force that comes from having such speed would probably kill every spirit instantly. Alongside using the spear, Yamai would use a chain, letting not a single person escape her. This chain would be effective at long distances, this would allow her to pull and swing around any victims that she caught. With both sisters being fused into one body, their minds would be in complete sync, letting their styles blend into each other. If they miss an attack, the other twin would immediately make up for any mistakes they may make, letting them fight to perfection. The creativity would only just be getting started. By combining the spear and the chain, this lets Yamai swing around the spear and impale at a distance that it could never reach. Her defensive options would allow her to use a shield, letting her block attacks from the beast. Her durability from this weapon and speed in general put her in a different league. Finally, her attack that contains the most firepower would be a combination between this spear and shield, creating their traditional weapon, a ballista. Just by loading this ballista, it would create an entire storm that would brew and destroy everything and turn the rubble on the ground into dust. And this is without it even being fired. When fired, this arrow would slice through everything, practically erasing anything it came into contact with. Remnants of buildings wouldn't be anywhere. Traces of the road would be gone. If you were in its path, you would no longer exist. Yamai destroys every other spirit with speed alone, but all of these other destructive abilities alongside the new habits of making it so that she can fight perfectly without having to think hard about it. The idea of even touching her is impossible. If you really want to think about it, there's no way to fight her. As I say this, there are still some spirits that are stronger. Mukuro is a spirit that utilizes spatial manipulation, but not in the way that you would think. With the use of her angel Michael, she can alter the very fabric of space-time and set its destination. In reality, none of these other spirits compare to Mukuro in the slightest. With the power of space in her control, she is actually untouchable, and Michael's power will be described as absolute, meaning that it's going to happen no matter what and there's nothing you can do about it, which makes Mukuro really overpowered. And you don't even know the half of it, let alone the start. With her key, Michael, anything that is visible or anything that cannot be seen, any objects that are tangible and intangible, it would not make a difference because Michael can open and close anything. Meaning that she can close off a person's memories, making them not even remember how to fight, let alone remember who they are. Michael can stop a fight before it even starts, and it gets even worse. Mukuro can seal off any spirit's powers, making them unable to fight. She has two win buttons right there. She can stop you from fighting and even thinking. So yes, anyone that has an ability will no longer be able to use an ability just by Michael sealing it. Mukuro herself can fight beyond the concept of distance, meaning no matter how far away you are, she can just slice through space and attack you. You can dodge an attack and she'll still be able to hit you by manipulating space and attacking through a tear in space. There's nothing you can do to fight her, and that is just the harsh, cold truth. If she uses her Taibu, you may just get lucky enough to actually land an attack on her, but that doesn't matter because the space in which you're attacking would just be manipulated and your attack would just come right back at you. Meaning, the space where you're trying to attack Mukuro in would be aimed right back at you. You can't attack her and if you do somehow attempt to attack her, you're just going to get attacked by your own attack. That is the simplest way of putting it. She is untouchable and I don't mean this lightly. And her most deadly ability would be Jerez. I don't know how anyone can beat her. I really don't. She's able 
to ensure the decomposition of any material matter. Michael has a death touch, and like I said, she can attack from any single range. So just by touching you with the tip of her weapon, you would turn into dust. And like I said, she is beyond the concept of distance. So no matter how far away you are from her, she's gonna touch you from whatever distance and you're going to die. It happens just like that instantaneously. As soon as the fight starts, you're either gonna get your power sealed or your mind is not gonna work because your memories are gonna be sealed and you're just gonna die from being touched or your attack is gonna be redirected at you. There is nothing you can do. I can't believe I almost forgot to mention that she can stop the entire planet from moving by sealing it. She's broken, she's already so overpowered, and she can also unseal her fullest potential, which obviously makes her even stronger. And if she's so bored and she wants a challenge, she can even unlock the potential of anyone she's fighting. Not that that's gonna matter, cause she's already so powerful to begin with. Yes, Mukuro is insane, and somehow there are some spirits that are stronger. For instance, we have the beast. Uh, wow. The beast uses every and any angel's power that I already mentioned in the video. She has every single spirit's abilities and she can use them all at once. She can transcend space, overwrite reality, see into the future, create volcanoes, blizzards, thunderstorms, tornadoes, yet the only power that would be nerfed would be the power of Zafkiel, time manipulation, she wouldn't be able to use. The power to rewind time, the power to send the consciousness of a person back in the time. She can't pause anyone else. She can't make any clones of herself like Kurumi, and she won't be able to send anyone forward or backwards in the time. Even so, she has access to every other ability that Kurumi has and all the abilities of every single spirit. Now, if she doesn't want to use any of these other abilities, she still has her giant claw. And this claw can cut through anything, letting her cut through the fabric of space-time. I don't think I need to explain why she's so high on the list. Come on, she's using everyone's abilities and she can cut through space-time. It's ridiculous. Space manipulation, time manipulation, she can use sound. She uses almost all the elements. I don't think I need to reiterate anything. Finally, the strongest spirit, God. Yeah, it's a pretty accurate description, God. Mio is the spirit of origin, meaning that she created every other spirit on this list. Yeah, if creating everyone on this list doesn't make you the strongest, then I guess you're gonna need a little bit more convincing here. What she can do is rewrite the laws of the universe and alter reason itself. Anything and everything will bend to her will. She could make anything happen. And the ability to kill anything would also be in her grasp. By coming into contact with her or her grains of light that she allows to rain from the sky, you would crumple away and perish. Mio can create a flower bud of death instantaneously, and this would shoot a light of death, and anything that touches it would die. She is winning every and any fight if you want to really break it down. She can rewrite laws. She can make it so that you cannot do anything if you come into a certain space near her. She can kill anything instantaneously, and her final attack would allow everything to turn into nothingness. Just by activating it, everything that's within the light will die. On top of this, she can regenerate instantaneously after taking damage. Mio is the god of all spirits, so it's not hard to see why she would be the strongest amongst all of them. With that being said, check out both of these videos I'm showing on your screen right now. You're going to definitely enjoy them. I know I definitely enjoyed making them. Thanks for watching the video if you made it this far. Definitely check out the other videos, you won't be sorry.